Now, the last thing in this whole section about customizing and how to understand how to customize this lifestyle is the question of snacks. Now, a lot of people in our kind of modern world are used to a high snack frequency. And by that, I mean, you know, someone might pick up a snack at 9.30 in the morning and then another one at 11, 11 11.30, and then some lunch at 1 and another snack maybe at 3 and then something else in the car on the way home from work at 5, 5.30. You know, then 7 comes around, you're having dinner, and then there's another snack out after dinner at 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Before you know it, there's really, you know, maybe an hour, maybe hour and a half that goes by, and you've got another something kind of food coming into your mouth. Now, we've been over a little bit of this before, but it's worthwhile just touching on this subject in terms of the kind of impact that this can have on your body. So those kind of snacks coming in, generally speaking, some of them are going to have quite a bit of carbohydrates in them. And the other thing too, of course, that we understand now is that if you're not eating in complete meals, even small portions of carbohydrates could get digested really quickly if there's no protein, no good fats, no vegetables in your stomach with it. So of course, those carbohydrates mean that there's going to be insulin present in your bloodstream. And when there's insulin, you can't burn your own body fat for energy. Now, the other thing too is that, you know, some of those kinds of snacks tend to be a little higher in fat and, you know, they might add a lot of calories, but your body can't really readily burn fat for energy if there's carbohydrates coming in. So if you're eating snacks that have carbohydrates and fat, you might be in a bit of a situation where you're taking in a lot of extra food energy, that's calories, but you're not actually able to feel the benefit of that energy in a big way because your body's not using that fat for energy immediately, it's probably storing a lot of it. So always try to work to meals that are satisfying and provide all of the energy that you need. If you're needing to snack often, probably your meals just aren't big enough and or the meals that you're eating are being digested too quickly. And so they're leaving you without energy after a couple of hours. Now, if you snack due to a lack of portable meals, really work on pre-packing Ziploc bags and containers to create meals on the go. And one really simple example I've got of this, we've been through some examples already, but this one even pushes the boundaries in terms of what's convenient. Like this is just so easy. And I've done this quite a lot, so I'm very, very familiar with this meal. Now I call this my meal in the bag. And the reason it's called that is because quite simply, it's a Ziploc bag with food in it that is ready to be eaten wherever I am. So I start with cottage cheese in that container and I use enough cottage cheese so I've got 20, 25 grams of protein, something like that. Around three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese maybe. Then I throw in a cup of fresh spinach and then I throw in around half a can of drained red kidney beans and I throw them all into that bag and they're all mixed up together and they all sit there and they kind of just hang out and they they have a bit of a party in the bag there and I can throw that in my bag and take it with me wherever I go. If I've got a really long day, sometimes I throw it in a bit of a lunch box or throw it in a bigger bag with one of those freezer packs with it so it stays cold. But in any way, it's very, very easy to pack. It's you know completely disposable in terms of what it's packed in. And it's very, very simple and fast to put together. So instead of having a snack, instead of you know taking something with you like that's not really going to be a complete meal, this is an example of just how easy, how quick and how portable these kinds of meals can be. Now, another example of a a snack or a kind of snack, and that's if you have a little bit of trouble with, you know, eating a large quantity of food in one go, is you could actually do what I call meal splitting. And that's where you basically take what you'd eat at one meal, for example, breakfast, and literally divide it in two. So you'd eat half now, and then you'd eat another half in about two hours time. Now, because of the kinds of foods that you'd be doing this with, insulin probably is not going to be a real big problem because you might, for example, be meal splitting some lentils, some eggs and some spinach, maybe something like that. What this really just means is that you're taking in half the food, you're able to process, digest that. Because it's two hours later, your stomach will have actually processed that and that processed food will be moving through you and giving you energy. So by the time that next mini meal, if you like, that half meal comes into your stomach again, your stomach's ready to digest things again. You know, your stomach probably is quite empty by that point, which is a good thing. So that's really, that's the verdict on snacks. Always think about, well, could you split a meal in half instead of, you know, going for a snack? Always think about, 
the reason why you're snacking? If it's because you're not having large enough meals? Is it because you're just not in a position to create the kinds of meals you'd like to eat? Or maybe it could be as simple as you just haven't found an easy way to create portable meals that work for you on a day-to-day basis. And so you might actually need to experiment a little bit with those different kinds of portable meals. 